Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano and on today's program we will be chatting with Rob Corley of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions here in Quincy. They're getting ready for their big upcoming annual gala celebration. We'll learn about that and more. First though, as always, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, nice day going on, sunshine out there. It's 56 degrees right now. A beautiful afternoon coming up with abundant sunshine and temperatures today will climb into the low, perhaps mid 70s and a half and half weekend. I think tomorrow definitely is the pick of the weekend with lots of sunshine, mild temperatures approaching 70 degrees. There is a good chance for some showers, especially by Sunday afternoon. Sunday's highs only in the lower 60s. The rain will continue Sunday night and right into Monday as well. Kind of a gloomy Monday, still pretty mild though with highs Monday in the mid 60s. Again, sunny 56 in Quincy right now. Checking news for you today, there will be a special election to fill the Ward 4 Quincy City Council seat now that Brian Palucci is becoming a district court judge. The governor's council earlier this week unanimously approved Palucci's appointment to fill a vacant district court judge seat, although which court is still unclear. Palucci will resign as Ward 4 counselor this month, a position he's held for 12 years. Palucci has run unopposed since 2013. Now that special election will be held to serve out the remainder of his term until next year's city elections in the fall. City Clerk Nicole Crispo anticipates a preliminary in January and then a final election in mid-February. Nomination papers are not yet available. Palucci does have his own law practice. He's a graduate of UMass Amherst and the New England School of Law. He and his wife have two children, including an adopted six-year-old son. Quincy City Council is considering whether or not to approve an additional $23 million for the new public safety complex. During this week's City Council meeting, Joe Shea from the real estate advisory firm Granite City Partners blamed the cost increase on everything from inflation to worker and supply shortages to the war in Ukraine. Uh, to try to make some cost savings that were large, although what we were finding is that there really was no specific material or service or trade. It wasn't just electrical. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it was every trade was struggling. Every service or every material purchase was escalating across the board. That's why we use the term hyper-escalation. Mayor Thomas Koch agreed that the increase is the result of the current economic climate. However, he stressed that he will not cut corners on the project and that the new building will be built to last 50 to 100 years. City Council previously approved $120 million for the project. The request for additional funding remains in the City Council Finance Committee. Their next meeting is scheduled for November 14th. A Quincy man prompted a brief lockdown at the Snug Harbor Elementary School in Germantown on Tuesday morning when he was waving around what looked to be like a gun. A police say 22-year-old Nathaniel Steinberg was waving the device around and screaming. At about 7.30 this past Tuesday morning, he also allegedly pointed the device, which turned out to be a folding knife, at a woman. The school was put into lockdown just after 8 a.m. as a precaution. Steinberg was taken into custody and charged with assault by means of a dangerous weapon. The fitness center at Quincy College has been dedicated in honor of the man who helped to found the fitness program at the college back in 2006. Dr. Wayne Westcott and his wife Claudia attended a dedication ceremony at the center back on Tuesday. Westcott retired from the college last year to care for his wife who has recurring cancer. He said the dedication was one of the great honors of his life. We are just amazed mm -hmm. at this. I'm almost speechless. Uh, people I haven't seen in years, um, political friends and, and colleagues and those of you from this college, which I love. I love Quincy College so much. It's meant so much to us. We've been here for 16 years, actually, uh, and it's, it's been our second home. You've been all family to us. We are so honored for all that you've done with this. And I, I'm talking about everyone. Um, you know, I, I can't believe, I really can't believe that with their incredibly busy schedules, that President DeCristofaro and Provost Yatin 
and, and our legal counsel, Jessica, and, and the rest of you, Tom Fam, all of you that are in positions of authority, which is everybody here, have taken time to make this possible and take time of your schedule to be here to celebrate this very special day with us. And that's what makes it so special is all of you, and I, I want to also thank our, our Board of Governors. I want to thank all of our administrators, all of our faculty members. I've not met a faculty member here that I didn't love. Um, you know, I, I did teach at some large universities at, at earlier in my life, but I've never taught with people that are better at teaching and love students more than Quincy College. It's amazing. Prior to joining Quincy College, Westcott was the longtime fitness instructor at the South Shore YMCA in Quincy. He's internationally recognized in the field of physical fitness, having worked with professional athletes, even the U.S. military. Here in Quincy, the 73-year-old Westcott says he's proud to have been able to help many older people achieve success in the field of physical fitness. Well, early in-person voting for the November 8th state election begins tomorrow. Here in Quincy, early voting will take place this Saturday and Sunday at Quincy City Hall from 8.30 to 2.30. Speaking on behalf of the Quincy Democratic City Committee, Norfolk County District Attorney Mike Morrissey is encouraging people to take advantage of early voting. It's going to be at City Hall, 8.30 to 2.30 for Saturday, Sunday. And then during the week, the clerk's office sets up a polling place in City Hall. So the regular hours of 8.30 to 4.30, you can walk in. And the last weekend, you can go to North Quincy High School. Right. And then, so we don't want to confuse people. Just That's to right. Yeah. To right. let them know that, that um, you can also make a request in Massachusetts. Uh, my friends in the legislature, Speaker Mariano, Bruce Ears, uh, uh, tacky um, have been uh, joint in instrumental in making it easier for people to vote and you can uh, go on I think there's a votema.com go to the Secretary of State's website yep. go to the city clerk's website yep. um, Nikki Crispo reminds me that if you send a t if you send a uh, email to her if you uh, send a fax to her if you send a letter a postcard to her she will make sure that you get a uh, ballot if that's your intention that you wanted to you know vote by mail she'll yes. make sure you get a ballot Quincy Democratic Committee, by the way, holding their 34th annual breakfast this coming Sunday at the Sons of Italy Hall on Quarry Street from 10 to noon. Several statewide Democratic candidates, including Lieutenant Governor candidate Kim Driscoll, are scheduled to attend. That is our check of news. Coming up, we sit down with Rob Corley of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions here in Quincy next. Welcome back. We're pleased to be sitting down in person today with Rob Corley, the CEO of NeighborWorks Housing Solutions here in Quincy. They have a big celebration coming up next month. There's always a lot going on. I think, Rob, last time we chatted, though, wasn't it virtually? It was virtually. Yeah, yeah it's great to be back in studio again in person, Joe. It's great to see you. I yes. really appreciate the opportunity. Always good to see you. Yeah, thanks uh, for, for having us. Yeah, sure, as always. Uh, for folks who don't know, I always like to start with kind of a little refresher about what is NeighborWorks Housing Solutions, Rob? <laughs> yeah, so we're based here in Quincy, yeah. uh, just right up the street here in Washington Street across from Frozen Freddy's, um, <laughs> and uh, have our favorite place closing, I think, very soon. Probably um, for the season, yeah. Yeah, um, but, uh, w you know, we develop affordable housing, and we run a lot of uh, special needs uh, programming and services here in the city. Uh, including first-time home buyer education, um, grant programs for seniors, um, and we have a portfolio of affordable housing that consists of uh, sort of market rate workforce, uh, regular affordable, um, like I, I like to call it, uh, and special needs housing for adults with disabilities, homeless veterans, um, and a variety of other, th uh, other things. But um, I think anyone having any kind of a housing issue, uh, a crisis, um, we're available to help them navigate that, whether we can do it ourselves or refer them to someone that can. We're a great resource to the community in that way. And then folks that are interested in economic advancement, like first-time home buyers, uh, saving money, credit repair, financial coaching, we offer those services as well. Okay. Um, it's a 501c3, right? Nonprofit corporation. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, 501c3. Yeah. We've, we've been uh, here in Quincy since 1981. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, we're uh, the community housing uh, development organization for the city. Uh, a Chodo is the yes. name. Yes. All um, the acronyms in the government. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've um, we've been in the city for quite some time and have had great support uh, from our board of directors, uh, many uh, Quincy residents, mm -hmm. 
and um, and of course from the city itself. Um, so. Uh, doing a lot of great things here in the city. Yeah, talk a little bit if you can about uh, the funding sources for neighborhood works. Sure, um, uh, for our developments they come from all over, right? right? Uh, federal, local, uh, and state. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust here uh, in the city of Quincy has been a remarkable resource for us over the years um, for uh, not only housing production but programming. Um, in addition to that, uh, we administer a lot of uh, programs for the state um, and provide uh, those programs not only in Quincy but in the region. Uh, so uh, we contract directly with the state. And then uh, the NeighborWorks part of this, or NeighborWorks Housing Solutions, we're part of a, a, a national organization called NeighborWorks America, mm. uh, and we're a network member, um, and that is a network of excellence, so it's not like you pay dues and get a pin. Okay. Uh, you're audited, and um, it gives us access to federal uh, budget money. Um, uh, they have a specific line item for NeighborWorks America, and we compete with other groups nationally uh, to leverage that money uh, into the communities we serve here in Massachusetts. Okay. So, um, you mentioned um, you're also a development organization. You have several already in Quincy. Uh, yes. Not only in Quincy, though, but across southeastern Massachusetts, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we do uh, quite a bit of real estate development, and uh, we also work with uh, a lot of partner nonprofits in providing uh, development expertise and construction management. Um, we have a portfolio of about a thousand units, wow. uh, and primarily uh, the majority of those units are actually here in Quincy, um, in the Quincy area. Father Bills and Mainspring being one of those agencies, right? Yeah, there. yeah, they had a wonderful event uh, uh, just this past week, yes. and uh, yeah, they've been a longtime partner of ours. They do amazing work for homeless uh, folks and and those uh, extremely low income uh, individuals and families. And uh, we partnered with them for years, yeah. um, uh, providing uh, technical assistance and or um, some development and construction management expertise. But um, they really are amazing at what they do, uh, not only here in Quincy, but across the region as yeah. well. And um, yeah, that facility that they're coming out of the ground with, we've been a small part of helping with that, but it's just wonderful to see it. And um, they're really leading, I think, the state in uh, providing the right type of services for homeless. Right. And the city here, especially, uh, as well, is leading, I think, in that space. So it's great to see that uh, that happening. I know at NeighborWorks, the goal is to kind of stop people from getting to that point where they need, an, like, an emergency shelter setting, right? Yes. You're, you're really kind of the step above yes. trying to stop that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, and it's getting challenging yes. uh, in this environment with, uh, you know, when you have uh, market rents in the 3,000s uh, and that's normal or considered normal, uh, you're in trouble. Um, and so we're dealing with a lot of um, seniors in particular mm. that uh, are on fixed incomes uh, and with utilities rising and everything else. Uh, it's getting harder and harder for them to afford uh, to live not only in Quincy, but really anywhere. Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're focused on uh, trying to be a little further upstream, as yep. you say, and, and try to help people before they slip um, with some of the programming and services we offer um, to prevent uh, you know, that one crisis sending someone into homelessness. Uh, or worse. Yeah, I mean the predictions are, are dire for the upcoming winter in terms of utility costs, food prices, just overall cost of living. So yeah. a senior Rob who is looking at these and hearing these stories and saying, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? You know, I'm already living on the brink. Mm -hmm. What can neighbor works do? Yeah, so I, I think any senior that's uh, facing those things, uh, some of the, uh, for example, if you're living in a home in Quincy uh, and you're on a fixed income, uh, you know, some of the expenses that you might have to fix something around the house, if your water heater goes, if your heat system goes, or something like that. We do have a grant program here in Quincy that we have available uh, to folks, uh, homeowners in particular, because one of those things now, uh, $5,000, uh, $1,000. If uh, you can get somebody to fix it, first it, of all. That's right? very yeah. true, but we can help with that as well. Okay. We have uh, a lot right. of contractors that we stay in, c in contact with. so. Um, so we can help seniors with some of those expenses that will help uh, allow them to be able to afford some of the things that we can't control, like okay. utilities and so on. But again, that comes into weatherization. A lot of the homes um, that a lot of seniors are living in in Quincy need some renovations and modifications, so we can help with any of that. Um, and then just being, a, a, you know, being able to listen, understand their problems, and maybe connect them with other resources that they may need. Sure. So uh, it's just a place, like I mentioned before, when you have a crisis that you can contact us and we're here to help. Okay. 
What if you're a renter, a senior citizen who's renting and facing, as you mentioned, the increasing rents? Yeah, so there's uh, obviously things that can help with utilities okay. and rent, uh, like the RAFT program. Yeah. Um, and uh, our partners, Metro Housing, offer RAFT here in Quincy. If you could, uh, for folks, RAFT means? Yeah, so uh, Residential for f Assistance for Families in Transition. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, that helps folks uh, not only with their rent, but with their utilities. Oh, all right. Um, so it is something that can help. Uh, again, it's, it's not a long-term fix, yeah. but it can be a short-term fix um, or at least assistance uh, through a, a tough winter. Okay. Um, so uh, if we don't have the service uh, we here in Quincy or, or anywhere really uh, in the region, uh, we can usually refer or uh, work with one of our partners to make sure we're, we're trying to help. Okay. Um, but we're called NeighborWorks Housing Solutions, Joe. <laughs> um, but, but sometimes well, in this environment, yeah. um, we're, we're running out of solutions. Yeah. Uh, that are, are um, And that's one of my biggest fears. Really? Yeah. Well, I guess the message is don't do nothing, though. You know, don't yes. just don't accept it as this is the this is my fate. There are there are ways that you can get help. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and especially if you're a homeowner as well. Right. Uh, you know, you you the deferred maintenance on a, a, a front porch or a heat system or um, a water tank, letting these things go, mm -hmm. um, it has a snowball effect. And um, so, like you said, they should just be reaching out, contacting us. And, uh, and we can help okay. or find someone that can. Um, none of this is possible without funding, without donations. Uh, and one of the big ways you do that is with your annual gala. Yes, yeah. no, yeah, we're looking forward to that uh, at Granite Links. Uh, uh, coming up now, I think in two weeks, on Thursday the 4th of November uh, at 6 p.m. We're uh, very excited. third, I think. Oh, the yeah. third, thank yeah. you. So uh, <laughs> serenity will kill me. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, we're really looking forward to that. Um, we have it, uh, this will be the second year back in person, oh, okay. which is yeah. wonderful. Yep. Um, and uh, they do a great job at Granite Links. We have, uh, we still have some tickets available okay. for those that may be interested uh, and sponsorships available. Um, you know, but we expect over uh, 250 uh, oh, no people kidding. there, and it's uh, quite a wonderful night um, where we highlight a lot of the work that we've done in the last year, uh, but also some of the trends and the things that we're working towards. And it's a great opportunity for it, uh, us to really highlight our partners. Yeah. So is it it's a formal sit down uh, dinner yep. presentation? Yeah. Formal sit down okay. dinner, and uh, you know the the not a lot of boring speeches, <laughs> my, uh, but uh, you know there'll be some some talking okay. uh, from myself and others, but. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, it's just a, it's a great event uh, yeah. where we really celebrate uh, what we've accomplished together over the last year um, and where we want to go uh, right. going forward. The funds raised, Rob, are they geared to any specific program or service at NeighborWorks? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, there are certain po points in the night where we actually have a live auction oh. and we dedicate some of those funds directly to the things that we're discussing. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, generally the funds are always to underwrite um, all the the work that we do for families uh, across the region and here in Quincy. Tell me about some of the items that are going up on the auction blog. Oh, well, geez, uh, one, one, of my, one of my favorite, I, mean, I don't want to admit this on television, my mother will kill me, they, it's called the, uh, it's like a craft beer, uh, it's actually a wheelbarrow oh. uh, of uh, craft beers all from all around uh, the region, oh, okay. which is one of my uh, particular favorites. Don't underestimate uh, your mom, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> she might so, be interested in that. Yes, yeah, but uh, I do like craft beer, okay. uh, so, um, but uh, that's one of my favorite uh, uh, items, yeah. and uh, there's a lot, a lot of others that I think people uh, would really enjoy. Okay. Uh, bidding on or, or you know the silent action a lot of other uh, games and things that we do oh, with the okay event. so oh, it's so very interactive fun things yeah and um it's it's a good time it truly is yeah do you have an auctioneer lined up or is that your job or no no we actually oh. have our board oh, okay. our, our board members uh, participate in uh in talking about each of the, the the things that we're looking for funding for and uh it it really is a real interactive fun environment and um uh, i'm really looking forward to it yeah it uh, sounds like this year's so the first first year where we really feel uh, that it's back to the way it should be. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, still opportunities uh, to sponsor or, or donate items? Yes, okay. yes, absolutely. And uh, you can contact us on our website or the number I think that you might be showing. Yes. Uh, and uh, so yes, we, we're very much looking for additional sponsors and, okay. uh, and for uh, anybody that would like to attend. Okay, um, have you already had your golf? tournament we did you we did. had that had in june yep. uh okay. it was a beautiful day yeah. uh, kind of like today um and uh, didn't get rained out or anything nice. and uh again that it was great to be back to uh, that type of event and we do that for our, uh, a lot of the work we do for homeless veterans yes uh, so that's a another great event and those are the only two really that we do uh annually um but would love again we'll be back at it in june okay 
uh, of the coming year and uh, would love to um, have more support there as well. Yeah. The mul is it the Mulligan tournament? The Mulligan the tournament, okay. yeah. It's Quite a second, appropriate. <laughs> a second chance for, for uh, veterans who need a home. That's nice, yeah. yeah. Um, current projects in Quincy, Rob? That you yes, uh, about, thanks, yeah. Joe. We, we have uh, uh, on just up on Lower Winter Street a project that, uh, again, was supported by the Affordable Housing Trust and others. It's a redevelopment of a bunch of older, dilapidated, uh, sort of blighted properties uh, into a new 20-unit uh, um, affordable housing development uh, with some... Uh, staff space mm. uh, on the ground level and uh, it's really um, brought that corner back to life. Yes. Uh, it's across the street from our Watson project which we did uh, a few years ago. Um, so uh, it uh, brought the sidewalk back, uh, green space out front and it's a beautiful building and we hope to be opening that in January. Oh very good. Okay. Yeah, so that'll be coming soon. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and I know that recently, I think down in Weymouth, you had a veterans home that you opened not too long ago. Yes, we yeah. had a veterans home in, in Marshfield, Marshfield uh, was okay. our most recent one. Uh, beautiful home, an old historic school okay. uh, that we renovated. Um, and uh, that is up and running now and, and doing quite well. So um, we try to do uh, our work all across the region. Yeah. And, um, and uh, because, uh, you know, this is a region and the housing crisis is regional. Yeah. Uh, it's not just one city or yep. town, uh, sort of all in this together here. And um, so we're, we're, we look at it that way too. Yeah. How do you kind of select or, or, or match the folks who need housing, Rob, with mm -hmm. the opportunities that you have for Yeah, them? well, unfortunately, uh, the demand is so high yeah. um, that uh, it's, a, it's a lottery process okay. uh, for right. anything like th uh, that, that we usually develop. Okay. Um, and so... Um, uh, that's how it's handled on all of these uh, projects across the board. We're also doing a senior development um, in Holbrook, uh, 72 oh, really? units okay. that uh, is coming out of the ground there now. Um, so that's supported by the consortium here in, in Quincy. How does one get into the lottery pool? Yeah, so um, yeah, we get that question a lot too. Yeah. So um, when when we start the process, yep. we we affirmatively we market that across uh, you know the region uh, to folks um, like here, for example, even um, uh, and make them aware that the lottery is opening. Okay. Uh, and you know through our website, dropping applications off at our office here in in uh, Quincy. Um, and or at the property, depending on where it is. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we go through a pretty rigorous process to make sure everyone's aware um, of the, the lottery and the okay. opportunities we have. Uh, but they come as the properties get closer to completion. I see. Okay. Uh, so, so usually about a 60-day window it was what we try to target before occupancy. Okay. Um, the supply versus the demand, where does that ratio sit yeah so I, I th yeah, the answer to that I think might be obvious to everyone yeah. uh, is that there is certainly not enough um, uh, supply so with affordable housing uh, you know we look at uh, subsidizing folks that are out there trying to rent in the market uh, and so we have a subsidy that we offer and provide there but the waiting list for that uh, support are decades really um, and so uh, but we still need much more subsidy to help yeah but uh, even if every family had access to a subsidy to help with the gap between what they earn and what the rents are, um, they wouldn't be able to find an affordable unit. Uh, Great, they've got the money, there's no place to spend it. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so we need also need a lot more production. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, here in the city of Quincy, uh, with the Affordable Housing Trust being sort of way ahead of the curve, um, uh, uh, I think the city has done a great job of uh, providing production, affordable housing production in units uh, and in partnership with the city, I think we've been able to accomplish a lot over the last, uh, you know, really almost two decades now. Really? Yep. Um, but uh, but there's always the need for more. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, that, that has been consistent for the entire time that I've been doing this. There's always a need for more. And I really feel like now, Joe, more than ever, uh, as the uh, se you know the boomers are retiring, yep. um, and a lot of uh, seniors are seniors really need some more affordable options. And they're competing with an unlikely group, right, Rob? The yeah, the yeah. We were talking folks. about this before. Yeah. It's funny, uh, you know, the the boomers are the, you know the the largest generation, and the second largest are the millennials. Right. And, um, I'm an Xer in between here, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, smaller, but uh, they're actually competing for the same type of housing. Right. Uh, they're looking for apartments, typically, uh, that are two to one bedrooms that are in commercial and, and you know city areas where services are. They want their pets. Um, <laughs> uh, they want their amenities. Mm -hmm. They want their gym. They want their things. So these two groups are competing for the same type of housing, which is adding another 
uh, pressure point exactly. and um, yeah. uh, makes it harder for uh, folks who are uh, uh, maybe in the middle yep. um, or, or not, uh, uh, you know, their income isn't low enough yes. or high enough. Yep. Um, and so there's a real squeeze there. What would your kind of wish or um, advice to the incoming uh, administration here in Massachusetts be when it comes to the issue of housing? Yeah, I, uh, I, well, that might be another program, Joe, <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, but I think generally, um, I, I think we're lucky to be in the state of Massachusetts yeah. because there are a, a tremendous amount of uh, programming here, and I think the, the current administration has done a remarkable job uh, with all that we've been through in the last couple of years and making sure resources have been available. Uh, going forward, uh, I think housing really needs to be elevated to a cabinet level type mm. uh, position and um, uh, be a major focus uh, of the incoming ad administration. Housing is always an issue, yeah. um, but I think now uh, it's it, it's become it's it's beyond an issue. It's a it's a serious crisis, and especially for our seniors. So I, I'd love to see that on the forefront. All right, Rob. Always good to talk to you, and uh, good luck in your gala. Thank you so much, Joe. Thanks for the opportunity to come in here and talk about our work. Appreciate you. It's our pleasure. We'll have you back, too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take a look at the forecast for you again for the rest of the day today. Just gorgeous wall-to-wall -wall sunshine in the upper 60s. And a uh, nice weekend, especially tomorrow. Look at that, near 70. Maybe some afternoon showers on Sunday. Definitely some rain here on Monday. Thanks again to Rob Corley for joining us from NeighborWorks Housing Solutions. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday, as I mentioned, Beth Ann Strollo here from Quincy Community Action Programs. Don't forget our website anytime, qatv.org. Our latest programs are there, news and information, video on demand, live streaming, a whole lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.